In this tutorial, we will learn how to perform cross-tabulation using R, where cross-tabulation refers to the process of creating a table based on two or more variables or dimensions, and these, this table will display the frequencies of observations across different combinations of variable categories or levels. Conventionally, we use variables in these types of cross-tabulation tables that have a ordinal or nominal measurement scale, or in other words, they're categorical. Now, cross-tabulation is sometimes just shortened as cross-tabs, and the resulting table from a cross-tabulation is sometimes referred to as a contingency table. And it, while it's a relatively simple process to create a cross-tabulation, and it can also be a simple process to interpret it, it can also serve as the foundation for other types of analyses, such as the chi-square analysis of independence or chi-square test of independence, and it allows for deriving insights via segmentation. Now, cross-tabulation, as I mentioned, is often going to be most useful when the variables involved are nominal or ordinal, but you could do a cross-tabulation with integer-type variables as well, depending on the circumstance. So to get started, you'll see that we are going to be working with this data set today, which is called employee underscore demo, and it's all lowercase. And this is a comma-separated values file or a .csv file. And you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five variables we're going to be working with today. We're just going to be focusing on the first two variables, which have a nominal and ordinal measurement scale, respectively. Now. Before you get started in RStudio, you want to make sure that you have saved this file or whatever comma separated values file you're working with to a folder that you can ultimately set as your working directory. Now I have set this file, I've already saved this file here to a folder that I'm designated as my working directory, which is my H drive and within my H drive, my R workshop folder. And you can see I've already saved the file here. And again, it's a comma separated values file or .csv. All right, well, given that, let's get into R Studio. As you can see, we have some information in our console about the R version we're using. Let's go ahead and remove that to clean things up a little bit by going to edit clear console here. Again, that's edit clear console in the dropdown menus. If you're using a Windows computer, you could also do Control L to clear the console. Now, we are ready to go to File, New File, and R Script to open up a new R Script editor window so that we can write our code into a script and annotate it and make for more reproducible code that can be more easily shared and understood by ourselves and others. So here is our R Script editor window. To start off, I'm gonna do a hashtag annotation here to note what the topic of this is. And again, we're talking about cross tabulation and I'll put in parentheses here that it's sometimes just called cross tabs. And we're doing so in R today. So I already mentioned that hopefully you save the data file to a folder that now we can designate as our working directory or in other words, set it as our working directory. So I'll make a note here using the hashtag annotations that will set our working directory. And I will use the setWD function from base R. That's setWD all lowercase. And within the parentheses, I will type in quotation marks. And within those quotation marks, I happen to know off the top of my head that again, that file that we're gonna be working with today, which is employee underscore demo dot CSV, it is located in my H drive and within my H drive, my R workshop folder. So I'm going to click somewhere on that line and click run to set my working directory. And we get confirmation here in the console. We can see that my working directory was set there. Almost certainly your working directory is going to be different. It'll have a different path. You might choose to just go to session, set working directory and choose directory to set that path manually. And you'll see in your console, it'll print out your, your the code for setting your working directory and you can just copy and paste that into your script, which makes it easier the next time that you're working on the same task and with the same data. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to read in the data. So I'm making another note here and we need to come up with a name for the object that we're gonna assign our data frame to that we're about to read in. Given that we're talking about employee underscore demo being the name of the file and demo in this case stands for demographics, I'm just going to call this object demo, D-E-M-O, all lowercase, as a stand-in for demographics. And we'll use the left-handed arrow operator here to assign what we're about to write to the right of this object name. 
we're going to use the left-handed arrow to sign, assign the resulting data frame to this object. You could call this object anything you'd like, as long as it doesn't begin with a numeral or a special character like a dash. So we use the read.csv function from base R to do this as within the parentheses, we'll set as our sole parenthetical argument and within quotation marks within those parentheses, we'll put the exact name of that data file, which if you recall was employee underscore demo, all lowercase and make sure that you include the .csv extension because it is a comma separated values file and we need to remind the .csv, read.csv function that that is in fact the correct file type. All right, so that looks correct. So let's go ahead and click run there. We get blue text in our console, which is typically a good sign. And let's take a look at that data frame, make sure we read in the right one. We can see over here in our environment that it includes 30 observations, which in this case refers to 30 cases or 30 unique employees and their demographic data across five variables here. So let's take a look at it by clicking there. You could have alternatively typed in into your console or put it directly in your script. You could use the view function here, which you see output in our console, and that's view with a capital V, and you just put the name of the data frame in the parentheses. So here you can see we've got the employee ID variable, it's your unique identifier variable, and we're gonna be focusing on facility and education variables, because as I mentioned earlier, they are nominal and ordinal measurement scales respectively. Facility is ordinal, or is rather is nominal. You can't really order these facility locations in a meaningful way. Whereas education is going to be ordinal because you can order these discrete educational attainment categories in a particular order where we can start with high school diploma and then move up to some college and then move up to a full college degree if you'd like. All right, so let's go ahead and start with doing a cross tabs here. So we're going to do our first cross tabulation. And we are going to do so on the facility and education variables. And we're gonna start off by just printing it directly to our console. And we're gonna use what's called the cross tabs or the X tabs function from base R. Because it's from base R, we don't need a special or additional package to install in order to access this function. It's ready to go for us, assuming we have R downloaded and installed, which you'd have to have if you're using R Studio. All right, so the first argument is going to be a formula. And because it's a formula in R, we are going to be starting with the tilde, which is the little squiggle here. And so we'll use the tilde operator. We're not gonna put anything to the left of it in this case because we already we just wanna do basic counts on these two variables. So this will create what's called a two-way cross tabulation table or simply a two-way contingency table or a two-way table for short. So we'll type in the name of the first variable, which is facility, and then put in the plus sign operator to separate it from the second variable, which is the uh, education variable here. And make sure you get the case sensitivity of these variables correctly. So facility was, is with a capital F and education was with a capital E. Now, if you wanted to add a third variable here to do a three-way table, you just use the plus sign to add a, a third variable there. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is add a comma so that we can separate the first argument, which is this right here, from the second argument, which so data equals, and we'll just type it in directly there. All right, so here we have data equal to demo here. And let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see down here, we get a basic cross tabulation table. Uh, now what you'll notice here is that each of these cells here of numeric data, each of these cells includes um, the raw counts or frequencies. So in other words, we can see here in terms of the employees at the Beaverton location, six have a college degree, have earned a, uh, all the way up to a college degree, two have earned a high school diploma, and seven have earned some college. Now you'll notice that these three categories from the education variable, college degree, high school diploma, and some college are out of order. And that's because we haven't done an ordered, created an ordered factor out of them. If you'd like to learn how to create an ordered factor, check out the tutorial on how to do counts and frequencies in R. And I show how to do that using the factor function. And that's factor F-A-C-T-O-R, all lowercase. And it comes from base R as well. You can use that to create an ordered factor variable or convert an existing variable to an ordered factor. All right. 
So this is how you do a cross tabulation and print it directly to your console, which might be totally fine for your purposes. But if you wanna do other types of operations on this table, such as converting these to proportions by row or by columns or to convert it to percentages, it might be easier to go ahead and assign this cross tabulation to an object that we can subsequently reference. So let's go ahead and copy this, paste it below, and we'll use the left-handed arrow to the left of this code that we previously wrote. And let's just come up with a name that we can assign for an object we can assign this to. So I'll call this cross tabs all lowercase here. So cross tabs all lowercase. You could call it whatever you'd like though. And so I'll click run. So now we have assigned this to an object and you can see that it appears here. If we were to just type directly into our console here, cross tabs, for example, and hit enter or return, it would return what we already saw above. So it's just confirming that we did assign the correct data, the correct cross tabulation table to this object. All right, so the next thing that we'll do is let's do a uh, convert the cross tabulation counts or frequencies, if you'd like to call them, to proportions by row, okay? And so to do so, what we'll do is we'll use the prop.table, so the proportion.table or prop.table, all lowercase function from Vasar. And as the sole parenthetical argument, or rather as the first parenthetical argument, we will copy and paste in the exact name of the table object, add a comma to separate it from the second argument, which is the numeral one. We're gonna put in the number one here. And that is the way that we can request with this function that the proportions are by row. And this will make more sense in just a moment with respect to what I'm talking about here. So let's go ahead and run that. And let's look down in our console here. And so what you'll see is the proportions are by row, which means that each row adds up to 1.0, or if you were to think of these as percents, 100%, okay? So we're looking at these proportions by row. And so what we can see here is that of the employees who work at the Beaverton facility, 40% have earned up to a college degree, 13% have earned as their highest level of schooling, a high school diploma, and about 47% have earned, have completed some college. All right, so I'll copy and paste these same two rows with the annotation, but I'll just now switch out row for column. What if you wanna do convert the cross tabulation counts to proportions? by column instead. Well, it's really simple. All you need to do is swap out the number one for the number two, and that will request with the prop.table function that we do proportions by column. And so let's take a look at that. All right, so you can see down here, now the proportions, if you add them up by column, they'll add up to 1.0, or if you're thinking in terms of percents, 100%. And so what we could see here is that Let's say, for example, we're interested in those people who have earned up to a high school diploma. Well, 50% of those people work at the Beaverton facility and 50% of the people work at the Portland facility and 0% of them work at the Hillsborough facility. Okay, so moving right along, what if you would like to, let's say, convert these proportions and we'll just use the most recent version of this right here uh, when we're doing proportions by column, what if we'd like to convert these, we'll copy and paste it below, to percentages? In this case, it'll be percentages by column, but even if you were doing um, percentages by row, it would be the same thing we're about to do. Well, we can simply multiply this, and this could go on either side of the code that we already wrote here. So 100 asterisk sign, which is the multiplication sign, and then the proportion proportional table that we just created based on the cross tabs, which is created proportions by column. If we multiply that by 100, it'll convert all the values, it will multiply each of the values in the cross tabulation table by 100, thereby converting them to percents. So watch what happens if we click run here. Okay, so as you can see, switch from proportion to percent here. Maybe this is easier for you to interpret as long as you remember that these represent percents here. All right, well, the last thing that we'll do so I'll make a an new annotation here is let's round to, let's say two decimal places or two places after the decimal, 
just to make things look a little bit more consistent here or in order to make it look like we don't we don't quite have this much precision perhaps, so let's go ahead and um, just round it to two decimal places. You could round it to one decimal place or zero decimal places, it's really up to you. All right, so the way that we can do that is we can actually just grab any one of these. I'm just gonna grab the, the line of code that we most recently wrote here, um, but we could have grabbed any one of these and you can do the same thing. I'm just gonna copy it. And then I'm going to first type in the name of what's called the round function, R-O-U-N-D from base R. And as the first argument, I'll paste in the code we wrote to create, in this case, the cross tabulation counts and converting them to percentages by column, add a comma, and then we'll add in the second argument, which is the number of places we want after the decimal. Because I want two places after the decimal, I'm going to enter the number two here. You could have entered three here if you wanted three after the decimals, uh, places after the decimal, or zero if you wanted zero, for example. So let's click run. All right, and you can see now we have converted this so that now we have, or rather we've rounded it, so there's just two places displayed after each of the decimal, or each decimal, so in other words, we've rounded to two places. All right, and if you wanted to, you could even go and we can then assign the last cross tabs table to an object. So if we wanted to reference that subsequently, we could then come up with a new object name and let's maybe call this cross tabs version two or cross tabs underscore V2, use a left-handed arrow operator and then paste the code that we just wrote here, click run. And there you have it. If you were to double click on this or type it directly into your console, or simply use, as I'll do down here, the print function from base R and type in cross tabs underscore V2 right there, which is our new cross tabs object and click run. You'll see that now we've assigned it to an object that we can subsequently reference. So that really illustrates um, how you can use cross tabs. Again, they're relatively simple to do, especially if you're just going to do a cross tabs with the, um, with and are just interested in the frequencies or the counts. And you can just use the X tabs function from base R and that's X tabs all lowercase. You can also do this with the table function which is table all lowercase from base R as well. And there's other functions from other packages you could use too to do cross tabs. But again, they're relatively simple to do. They're relatively easy to interpret and they can still help you glean some important insights as they can help you segment down and understand, let's say if you wanna drill down to just the employees who received a college degree, well in this cross tabulation here in our console, we can get a better idea of what proportions, for example, are at each facility. Now, given the context of the organization, this might just start to make more sense, or it might lead you to ask other questions that then you could collect or acquire more data for, analyze, and then drive more robust insights. So this wraps up the tutorial on how to perform cross tabulation in R. Again, cross tabulation sometimes is abbreviated as cross tabs, and sometimes the resulting table will refer to that as a contingency table, especially when we're using it for a chi-square test of independence as an example.